can we change human face and can we do it non-surgically? We are all have different structure of face. We differentiate each other through the face. Our identity is our face, the main identity. Even though we have a different structural face, there is certain proportion between different parts of our face that we accept it as a norm of human face. We call it harmonious face. This harmonious face is a reflection of a skeleton under. If the skeleton is proportionate, the face is proportionate. But what happens if the skeleton is not proportionate? For example, upper jaw is small, or lower jaw is too big, or any combination of this. This would cause a disproportionate face that can significantly affect the quality of our life, especially in this era that image is everything. How we can correct this skeletal deformity? That depends on how we look at skeletal formation. Many people believe that the skeletal form is controlled by genetic. It is fixed. Therefore, the only way that we can correct it is through surgery. However, natural experiments show different views. For example, if you look at the evolution of human, you will notice any times that our metabolism and respiratory function has changed, our mid-face has changed. Any times that our forebrain has changed, our forehead has changed. We have started to have processed food, our jaws has changed. We have started to be social um, animals, we communicate with each other, and through that, our face become much smoother. But these changes was not only limited to evolutionary changes. During embryonic life, we constantly changing as the soft tissue is changing. We can do an experiment to see is how soft tissue is important. If you paralyze the muscles during embryonic life, the skeletal changes, uh, changes significantly, affects significantly. These changes is not limited to evolution and embryonic life. From the time of the birth until our adulthood, we're constantly changing. As we are aging, this changing continues. So nature shows that the form of the skeleton is not fixed, it's changeable. How the soft tissue, the adjacent tissue, communicate and change the form of the skeleton? And why is this important? Because if it can change the skeleton in somehow, we can mimic that, learn from the nature, and do the same thing. During this study, we notice as actually a skeletal form can affect it with three main factors. Neurological, some belong to immunology, and some belong to mechanical stimulation. Mechanical. Based on this neuro immuno mechanical interactions, we created a treatment uh, plan that is called NIM. Neuroimmunomechanotropy. And through this name, we were able to change the skeletal form. Let's look at this in more details. Let's start with the mechanical environment. We know from the history that our ancestors knew that constant form or static forces can change the form of a skeleton. They wrap their babies, and that would cause the change in the form of a skeleton. Depends on how they wrap the head of the baby. It could get wider or it can get longer. That actually the static forces is not the best way to talk with the skeleton. The best way to talk with the skeleton is dynamic forces. That acceleration of the force, magnitude of the force, frequency of application of the force, all these factors can change and a skeleton responds differently. For example, if I'm pulling one tooth and just apply a static force, the bone resorbs. But we discovered if we apply a dynamic force, the bone forms not resorbs, and the shape of the bone stays, will not destroy. The second factor was immunological factors. There is two main cells that change the shape of the bone. One are the osteoclast, or bone resorbing cells, and one is osteoblast, or bone forming cells. Imagine we can use these cells in our own benefit. In one series of experiments, 
we localize the osteoclast at the roof of the mouth of the rat. So you are looking at the mouth of the rat from the above, and you can see in the area that we activated the osteoclast, in a few days, the whole roof, the bone, start to disappear. Then we went back and activate the osteoblast, and we able to bring back the form. In another series of experiments, we decided can we stimulate or change the shape of the bone by stimulating bone formation at the surface of the bone. We activated the osteoclast and osteoblast through the different procedures and we were able to change the shape of the bone. In the top part of the slide, the control group, there was no change. In the bottom part of the slide, as you can see, that green line that you are seeing it shows the formation of the bone. There is significant amount of the bone formation in the short period of time. That can be used in many aspects. Maybe we don't need that much of a bone graft anymore. Maybe we can stimulate the body to produce the bone itself. In another series of experiments, we were studying that how we can move the bone against each other. That would be changing the shape. The bone in the skull are articulating through a specific joint that called suture. We notice if we activate the osteoclast around the sutures, those bones can be disarticulated. Now we can move them around. And remember, these cells are so precise that they can cut exactly the contour of the bone much, much more precise than any surgical knife. Therefore, we call them biological knife. In the third series of experiment, we were studying what is causing the deformity? Deformity is some sort of a lack of coordination between the different shape of the bones. You can have all your bones as small and you can be harmonious. You can be all bones big and you can be harmonious. Deformity is some sort of a, some part stays big, some part stays small. But why? As we discussed, this is not genetic. We notice is the form of the skulls is controlled by nervous system. The nervous system receive signals from the lower jaw and upper jaw all through the life. And one of the receptors that's sending the signals is actually the teeth. And through these signaling patterns, it establishes a program that dictates how the jaw coordinates with each other. Based on that coordination, the form of the jaw is dictated. So as you can see, the nervous system, the program that it has during the life, the program that it's adopting during the life, can affect the shape of the jaws. Uh, in this series of experiments, we change this signaling for the nervous system. The gray one shows the control animal, the lower jaw. The yellow one shows how by changing the nervous system without any other thing, we were able to grow the lower jaw. So this is the basic of a name that I was explaining to you. Really, can mean change human face? In this patient, the upper jaw did not grow properly. Can we use NIM to activate or change the form of the skeleton, correct the form of the skeleton? We did. And as you can see, the shape of the face become harmonious in short period of time. This is a reflection of correction of underlying skeletal deformities. In this patient, the lower jaw did not develop properly. This patient, if you wanted to treat it Nowadays, we need to wait until he stops to grow, and then after that, we do the surgery. It's very expensive, may have side, side effects, and the patients need to wait until it's finishing growing. That can be a long time. Part of your life, you go with this harmonious phase. Can we prevent that? So we applied neem on this patient, and as you can see, the form of the phase come back to the normal in a short period of time, and that also is a reflection of correction of skeletal deformity underlying. So far, we knew about the skeletal deformities correction in the children. Can we correct the skeletal forms in the adult? Let's get back to the nature, learn from the nature. In this slide, you are seeing the skull of the identical twin. They look like anything but identical. What happened? One of the twins later in life have a tumor in the brain that causes significant amount of release of growth hormone. The release of growth hormone was associated with the increase in the growth of the lower jaw when the patient is adult. For a long time, we thought that the skeletal form in adult is established. It cannot be changed. 
and now a tumor can change the skeletal form. If the tumor can do that, then there is a way to change the skeletal form. So we study that. Can we change the form of the skeleton in adult? And nowadays, we are starting to treat adults using NIM and using this knowledge. Of course, I need to say that we are still at the beginning of understanding all these procedures, and there is a huge homework for us to learn from the nature how to do this. In this patient, the lower jaw, when compared with the upper jaw, was bigger, and the upper jaw did not grow properly. Application of NIM, we were able to again reestablish the harmonious face for this lady. And that was accompanied with the correction of the deformity of jaw underlying. In this patient, uh, the deformity was not only in the horizontal path, was also in the vertical path. And that was affecting the quality of the life significantly. We were able to reestablish the harmonious face for this child and for this uh, person. And through that, we also were able to improve the quality of life. It was not just about a harmonious face. It also was about how other function inside the mouth improves. So if I want to summarize the discussion today, if you decided to change a shape of an object, here we're talking about the change of the skeleton. First, we need to change the programming, which that means that we need to have a neurological correction, deprogram the brain. We need to establish a new program, reprogram the brain. We need to get rid of the old structure by immunological path, destroy the previous form, and then we need to reestablish a new form by activating the bone formation. Through the mechanical stimulation, we can give a proper direction to where we want this mechanical, this formation to occur. And that's the summaries of the need. So if I wanted to leave you guys with one message, that message would be the skeletal form is not fixed, is not destined to be. Every human being has the potential to have a harmonious face. The only difference is that the developmental path can be disrupted. Therefore, our job as a clinician, as scientists, is to make sure that we establish, we recognize these problems and establish the proper path as soon as we can. Thank you so much.